Okay, so I've been sitting here for the last five minutes trying to think of an intro for this video uh, and uh, here's what I've come up with. Okay, let's start. Do, do. Hi guys, you're back with me. My name is Alice. This is my new channel, Alice's Bucket, where I'm going to be telling you all about my travels and uh, some of the stories that I've collected along the way and what I've learned from them. If you have been watching my videos, then you know the drill by now. I'm going to be taking a word or phrase from this bucket at the start of every video and that's going to be the topic for discussion. So let's start. What are we going to talk about today? So today's topic is all about being safe. Ooh, there's nothing sexier than safety, guys. But on a serious note, if you are planning on traveling anywhere solo in the near future, lol, then stick around to hear my top tips for staying safe. So I'm sure before everyone's first solo travel adventure, their parents immediately are reminded of the film Taken. If you've never seen Taken, it's a great action film. It stars Liam Neeson. Uh, I recommend you watch it. Unless you're going to go traveling soon on your own, uh, then I recommend you don't watch it, probably. Yeah, the premise of the story is that Liam Neeson's teenage daughter and her friend are going traveling around Europe together for the summer. And immediately when the girls arrive at the airport, you know, they're greeted by this handsome Frenchman, they get to chatting and they share a taxi together. And then things go awry. I'm not going to uh, explain any more if you haven't seen it. No spoilers. But Liam Neeson is the uh, protective parent who has to go uh, save the day. He's the hero of the story. And if you are a protective parent worried about your child going traveling, I would say try not to worry. I have nothing else to say <laughs> and I know that's easier said than done but trust me everyone and their grandparents are going traveling obviously not in recent months but in general it's really so simple if you apply the same safety principles when you're abroad as you do at home then you should be able to stay safe and still have an amazing time so I'm going to split these safety tips into two categories. The first being the safety and well-being of your own self and the second being the safety of your belongings. We're going to start with the safety of you because that is the number one most important thing in the world. OK, and it really is as simple as saying if you wouldn't do it at home, why would you do it abroad? However, there are a few extra things you might need to think about that you don't really have to worry about at home. Taxis have to be one of the biggest annoyances when traveling. There are taxi drivers out there who do play by the rules and have you on the meter and pay a fair price. However, there are also that big number who just want to get as much money out of you as possible. I remember when I flew to Bali, I wasn't 30 seconds past security when I was surrounded by supposedly taxi drivers uh, offering me a fair and a good price to where I wanted to go. I was surrounded by all these men kind of shouting at me um, and no matter how many times I said no, they would not leave me alone because they were desperate to get to me before I got to the taxi rank. And this is where my first tip comes in. If you are going to get into a taxi, get one from an official taxi rank or hail one down that's driving down the street. Do not get in a car with some random loiterer at, at an airport or a hotel or at a tourist trap. Don't do it. They'll tell you that they're giving you a good deal, but in reality, they're just trying to take advantage of you being a foreigner in this place where you know nothing about the culture or the money or uh, just general practices. And if you're at home and some random guy came up to you and said, oh, I'll take you where you need to go. I'll give you a good price. Would you then go get in their car? No, God! So why would you do it abroad? Go to an official taxi rank. Look out for an official taxi car. And you'll know it's a proper taxi because uh, it will usually have the taxi company uh, logo and contact details on the side. Also, every country has 
an official taxi. You know, you've got New York, which are, have those yellow taxis. You have London, we have the black hackney cabs. It's the same all around the world. Do your research and find out what an official taxi actually looks like. Then you know which cars are safe to get into. Okay, so once you've found your official taxi, here's a couple of things you should do before you get in. The first thing to do is to note down the taxi company and the contact details. You should also note down the taxi number plate uh, just in case you need it for later. You should also just ask the driver how much it might roughly be to get to your destination and ask them to put it onto the meter. If they don't put it on the meter, they could end up charging you whatever fare they like. You could also pop the destination into Google Maps or your GPS or whatever and just keep an eye on the route the taxi is taking. Make sure they aren't going the long way around just so they can charge you extra. And I know that I'm not saying anything revolutionary or new, uh, but these are things that you might overlook if you are not used to taking charge of your own travel plans. Another very simple rule to adhere by, always let someone know where you are. And you don't necessarily have to call home every day, let them know where you are, what you're doing. It might be as simple as letting the receptionist at your hostel know where you're going to be going that day. Because I don't know if you saw that film, 127 Hours. If you haven't seen the film, it is based on a true story about a man who went out trekking uh, somewhere in the Arizona Canyon. And he ends up getting his arm stuck. Uh, in between some rocks but he didn't tell anyone where he was going so even as time passed no one knew where to look for him I'm not going to talk any more about that film because it is it's kind of a happy ending but uh, if you know what I'm talking about then um, it's it's a little it's a little it's a little gross so please let someone know your whereabouts so that if something does go wrong people know where to come looking for you Another very simple but very important tip is to never accept drinks from strangers. And this should be the same at home, but not everyone feels the need to be so cautious in such a safe and comfy environment. However, when you are traveling, you are a foreigner and foreigners are always targets because you're away from home, you're vulnerable, you probably don't speak the language or don't know anything about the culture and you're probably very willing to make new friends. You imagine that you're walking down the road, you find this cute little pub, you go in, you and your friends start chatting to some other people at the bar. They all happen to be locals. Oh, isn't this great? We're chatting to the local people. You're sitting down, you're all talking together, you're making friends, you're having a good time. At one point, one of the locals goes, ah, oh, do you want a drink? My turn for a round. At that point, you should say no. But the thing is, most people in this situation will just say sure because they don't want to look like a fun vampire. I mean, it's a fun vampire because you like sucking all the, the fun out of it. Fun vampire? Yeah? Okay, let's say you want to get your own drink, but you don't want everyone else to know that you don't really trust them. Because at the end of the day, they are strangers still, right? So here's what you do. The next time someone offers to buy a round, just say, sure, let me come help you with the drinks. That way you can go up to the bar with them and still secretly keep an eye on your own drink. You can also just say, oh, I need a break for now, I'll get one later, and then you can go up to the bar yourself and get your own drink. I'm just trying to make a point that it's all in our nature to want to connect and make friends. But at the end of the day, if you just met someone at a pub, they're still a stranger. Just keep an eye on your own drink and you can still create amazing memories. Okay, so now you know how to take care of yourself, what about your belongings? Well, I've got a few tips on this too because I learned the hard way what it feels like to have your stuff taken. Now, before I launch into my first story, you should know that I am the kind of traveller that constantly has their GoPro out and I'm filming and taking photos of absolutely everything. I know and some people find that super, super annoying. So one day I was exploring the city of Bratislava. It's a very small city, so you literally can explore it in a day or two. And I was there with my brother 
and we went all around the city visiting the presidential palace, Slavin's Hill, the Blue Church. So we got back to the hostel and I'm rummaging around in my bag for my GoPro and I can't find it anywhere. Now I'd been using the camera a lot that day but I hadn't used it in a little while so I couldn't remember the last place I had it. So we now go back to every single place we've been to that day to try and find it and it's nowhere to be found and to this day I still haven't found my camera I don't even care about the camera to be honest it's the fact that I lost 10 days of video and pictures including all of the footage I took in Budapest which was one of my favorite cities because of the beautiful architecture and the baths and I can't rule out the possibility that my camera was stolen out of my bag or taken from a table when I wasn't paying attention. So if you happen to find a GoPro Black 5 in the summer of 2019, uh, can you please uh, let me know? Is it, has it got pictures of me in, in, in the Budapest baths? Because if so, I would like those pictures back. I really don't care about the camera, you can keep it. I just, I just want the pictures. I've got a new camera now, so who's the loser now? It did cost me a couple of hundred quid, so uh, probably me. The other experience I had, we were proper victims of theft. Let's set the scene, shall we? We had just arrived in Barcelona, me and the whole family, and my plans were to explore Barcelona with the family for a few days before then leaving to go travelling around Europe. In order to do that, I needed to book my train out of Barcelona. There were maybe 50 people in the queue in front of me, and I thought, well, okay, maybe 20, 30 minutes. There's no rush, that's fine by me. I waited over two hours before I got to the front. And by this time, my family was so fed up of waiting for me, they had gone to McDonald's in the station, and they were munching down on Big Mac. But I finally make it to the front, I get my ticket booked, and I'm all ready to go back to the apartment. Suddenly, my brother comes running up to me and says, Mum has had her bag stolen. What had happened is that in this very crowded McDonald's, uh, my family had all put their bags underneath the table and my mum had put her handbag next to her on the table, you know, practically touching. But as soon as she had her back turned for a couple of seconds, the bag had been swiped. Now it's safe to say that my parents are not the coolest of cucumbers when it comes to situations like this. We ended up speaking to a police officer who told us that we needed to make a police report but we had to go to one specific police station because it was the only one with an English translator. So while I went with my mum to the police station, everyone else went back to their nice, warm, comfy apartment. What did my parents do to deserve me? I don't know. So we spent the rest of the day at this police station because you have to wait in a long line of English tourists all looking very sorry for themselves or waiting to fill out police reports. Now, this is in no way a sponsored video, but I have to tell you about this card. This is a Starling bank card, and this was in my mum's purse when it was stolen. Now, the great advantage about having a Starling card is that every time you use it, it sends a little notification to your phone telling you how much you have spent and where you have spent it. Not only did the thief have the audacity to swipe my mum's bag from a busy McDonald's in the middle of the day, but they had had the nerve to use the Starling card to get a taxi as their getaway. Now, luckily, my mum still had her phone on her person, which means that we could see how much the thief spent on the taxi and exactly what time they got the taxi. The biggest kick in the teeth about all of this is that because the thieves not only stole our card but actually used it, this now counted as two crimes, which meant we had to spend double the amount of time at the police station filling in two separate police reports, one for theft and the second for fraud. It was like the thief was mocking us through bureaucracy. We ended up visiting the police station three days in a row, which did put a little bit of a dampener on our holiday, and we lost out on a hundred euros and a mobile phone. So the question is, how can you avoid situations like this? Well, my dad would probably say, don't hang around the train station for two hours waiting for someone to get a ticket. 
I, on the other hand, would say there are a few things you can do. Number one is to keep your valuables at the bottom of your rucksack or in hidden compartments. Number two, wear your rucksack on your front instead of your back. That way you can keep view of it at all times. Number three, only take what you really need. If you're only going out for a couple of hours, why not take a little bum bag instead? Number four, if you are going to put your bag down, the best thing to do is to put it in between your feet so that you can have contact with it at all times. And number five, you can get little padlocks to put on your bags, which I do a lot, um, especially if I'm in a hostel where there aren't any lockers available or I have to part with my bag for any reason. I also have a bike lock that I use sometimes Sometimes, especially if I'm on a train and I want to go sit down and I can't necessarily keep an eye on my bag at all times. The important thing is to remember that being safe isn't about being scared, it's about being aware. It might feel like a nuisance to have to think about all these little extra things, but it's really only a little bit of extra work that could make the difference between you having the time of your life and you having an absolute nightmare. I do hope that you found this video useful. Uh, let me know in the comment section if you have. Let me know what your safety tips are. You can post any questions you have in the comments below or you can email me at alicesbucket at outlook.com. So remember guys, stay safe, have fun and I will see you next time. Bye!